The Neil Mellor Football Show is sponsored by the Red Balloon Toy Shop, selling classic toys for today's kids. Find us by West Kirby Train Station. Yes, hello everybody and welcome to the Neil Mellor Football Show. My name is Simon S. Jones, this is Neil Mellor. Now then, uh, you had a weekend away down in London, so you missed the game, the Liverpool game, which is sad. In fact, in honour of your weekend away, I almost turned up chewing gum and wearing a little woolly hat. <laughs> I thought it might make you feel, uh, feel at home. So to those people who haven't seen the reference to that, it was because I was down on Soccer AM, Sky Sports, Saturday morning, 10 o'clock, and the reference to the woolly hat and chewing gum was Chris Marshall, the guest. Chris Marshall, that's his name, I believe. Famous yeah. for BT adverts, answering the phone, and he's an actor, and he was chewing gum, showing a little bit of disrespect, maybe, on the TV show, Chewing Gum. Yeah, I can't stand that when you go and do an interview with a, a footballer generally in my line of work and he turns up <laughs> chewing gum. That was his choice, but yeah, so I'm glad you didn't put your woolly out on. No. You put that jumper on anyway. Got so. the gogs on as well, so <laughs> I'm doing all right. Um, now then, Liverpool, obviously, uh, not, not a good show. 44 minutes anyway of very, very, very poor stuff. Uh, let's begin with the positives, though, because um, we're going to spend far more time on the negatives, I, I feel, later on. Um, to fight back to win a point, after being 2 0 down, should you be happy? I think any time you go 2 0 down in a game, if you can come back and get anything from the game, I think you, you should be happy with that, yeah. I think it felt like a point gained. I think, look, going into the game, we'd have been disappointed to draw at home to Aston Villa, but certainly when you go 2 0 down, and it possibly could have been worse than that, to get a 2 2 draw at the end of it, I think, I think it's a point gained, and it's one of them where you're thinking, not a great performance, need to move on quickly. Yeah, people do say, don't they, it's a funny scoreline 2 0 because one team, the team that's leading, doesn't know whether it's a statistic or twist, but the statistics don't really prove that out because generally, if you tune it up at half time, I think I read somewhere it's like 5% of the time you're not going to win that game. So it's actually a, that goal from Sturridge in the 44th minute was absolutely crucial. It, it, it always felt crucial, didn't it, when he scored? And they always say it's a good time to score just before half time because if Aston Villa would have gone in at half time, 2 0 up, full of confidence, they'd have been absolutely buzzing in that changing room at half-time. Completely different mood for them. That Daniel Sturridge goal, all of a sudden it's like, well, we're kind of hanging on maybe for the second half, whereas 2-0 up, it's like we can go and get a third or a fourth there. So that was a crucial goal, a vital goal just before half-time because it gave Liverpool the belief that we, we certainly would get something out of the game. But, you know, like you say before that, it wasn't good enough and it was a, a poor display. I think it should be mentioned as well, Aston Villa. I think they were lifted by the performance at the start of the week against Aston Villa, uh, against sorry um, Arsenal at home when when they were mm. they were losing pretty much out of the game, got themselves a goal late on, but, but they finished the game on a, on a high and they were going into the game at Anfield on a bit of a high. Didn't expect to get anything Arsenal against Arsenal, didn't, but finished the game on a high and that they took that into the game at Anfield and started extremely well. Yeah, and of course they came to Anfield last season uh, and won three one. So. Liverpool have got a point more than they did in the same fixture last year, which you know you compare like for like last season. I think it's ten points up on the the same fixtures. So again, you know it's progress, isn't it? Yeah, uh, but Aston Villa played similar again. They play they play on the counter attack. They, that's I suppose. Well, they went for it. They really went for it from right from the very first minute. But that is their sort of identity, really, aren't they? They're a, I don't I don't think they'll go down this season. I think they are a better side than they were last season. Yeah. Um, but they certainly suit playing away from home. Then they're, they're not as good at home. Um, and they, they had a go at Anfield, so they did well first half. Yeah, let's clear something up. Was it a penalty? I'm a centre forward. You're asking me. As I'm bearing in on goal, I mean, what, what's, what's the keeper doing? He's rushing out, and then he, he almost collides into Suarez, pulls his arm away. But for me, it's such bad goalkeeping that. And, and yeah, it's a penalty. It's clumsy goalkeeping. I think the referee has to point to the spot. And we've seen Guzan do that. He was lucky not to get punished at Anfield, uh, not at Anfield, at Villa Park, Park. but when, yeah. when he took storage out as well. So, it was poor goalkeeper, but it was a definite penalty, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think there was a massive furore after the game that in the cold light of day, once everyone's seen it, you know, seven or eight times, I think the vast majority of people are now agreeing with, with you and with me that, yes, it was a penalty. And let's just move yeah, on, shall we? It's, it's not like... Um, it's just a penalty. It's a penalty <laughs> kick. I think Guzan's getting away with quite a bit of stick, to be honest, because I think it's really poor goalkeeping. You know, Suarez is going away for it. He doesn't need to doesn't need to get out there the way he does. So, I think he's got away with a little bit of stick because it's poor goalkeeping. Yeah, and Suarez, he didn't score, but that's that's something he gives, isn't it? And since the start of last season, he's now won seven penalties, which is four more than any other player in the league. So he's even when he's not scoring, he's chipping in. 
And how many how many of those penalties has he taken? I don't think he's taken he a penalty. Taken any, no. So so that that's that's a scary stat in itself. The fact that he's way out there as the top goal scorer, and he's not even scored a penalty. It's uh, but he wins them, which is uh, it's a great stat to have. Yeah, there's a, a little stat that could be a bit of a worry. Since he came back from his ban, if he doesn't score, Liverpool don't win. Now, what does that tell you about the need to score more than the opposition rather than keeping a clean sheet? Didn't know that's that. Yes, it is a worrying. I like to get one every week that you don't. Well, know. it shows the importance of Luis Suarez in Liverpool's team. He's, we know he's the best player in the league, and any team's going to miss him. Um, it's just a little bit concerning, like you say, without Luis Suarez, then um, it's, it's a big concern. Other players have got to step up to the plate when, when he's not there. Thankfully, he is there, so we're not we're not going to miss him. And without any kind of um, hopefully injury, then he's going to be there for the rest of the season, and he's going to be a vital part to Liverpool picking up more wins than not. Yeah, indeed. Um, mentioned at the start that there's more negatives than positives, so we might as well get cracking on this. Um, <laughs> what is going on with the defence? Again, two more goals conceded. You can't rely on the SAS to get you out of trouble every week. He's chopping and changing the defence quite regularly. There's, there's obviously, not having a settled back four is a problem. But he's playing one shape, he's playing another shape, he's looking at different combinations. He's got Sissoko on the left, who no one's impressed with. So what's the solution here? I don't know, but I really do feel as though if you don't have a settled back four, that sort of understanding um, back there, there is always going to be problems. I think communication is massive for defenders. The fact that we have so many different nationalities, well, different nationalities of five positions back there, the four set defensive positions and the goalkeeper as well, for me, I, th I think that is a problem. The fact that there's constant change all the time and um, without that understanding, we, we are going to be shipping goals in, and we've, we've seen that already. Um, far too many goals this season. We can't, like you say, keep relying on the attacking players to score five at Stoke, to concede three against Stoke, who are an average Premier League side. That is a little bit concerning. Again, against Aston Villa, you know, we're talking about Sacco. He's our marquee signing, and, and he's out injured at the moment. What's our um, preferred centre half partnership? I don't know. I don't know if Brendan Rodgers knows what, what his preferred defence is at the moment but it has to be said we've had a lot of injuries back there defensively which mm. is a worry but we need to get a solid back four in as quickly as we can and like you say left back it's been a problem position all season we said Enrique probably wasn't going to last that he's had injury he's not been involved Flanagan came in did extremely well but Sissoko he's, um, he's, look, he's looked off the pace it, it does yeah, have to be said he doesn't look fit to me I mean he looks match fit but he doesn't look Premier League fit he look, he's, he's out of puff 60 minutes into the game. I think what Brendan Rodgers wants from his fullbacks, I don't think Sissoko offers him that. And, and that's, that's why perhaps he might have to look for a different option. And now's the time to do it. I think the next game is just over a week's time, the, the derby against Everton. So there's time, hopefully, to try and reinforce in that area because it's a position that's vital. Mm. Sissoko only made three attacking passes in the, in the opposition half in the second half of the game on, on, on Saturday, which which tells a story in itself. The players don't really trust him to, to get the ball and to, and to put a decent pass in. So he's not getting the ball, which immediately limits your options by, you know, by at least a third, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, we're not just going to pick on Sissoko here because it wasn't a good team performance all round, you know, that first half. But Sissoko, it's an important position. You've got to offer that attacking threat going forward. I think Glenn Johnson out on the right-hand side, he's not shown the same form he did at the start of the season, which again... Is a little bit of a concern. He's had a few injury troubles himself, and just just defensively at the moment, we, we don't look as solid as we have done. You know that protection for the back four, and uh, at the moment there's too many mistakes, and we look like a side that could concede every time we play at the moment. Yeah, you compare Johnson and Sissoko to Baines and Coleman, for example, chalk and cheese, isn't it, with what they're offering going forward at least. Well, I think if you're comparing our full-backs to Everton full-backs, I think you'd say that they are the better full-backs, certainly, on current form and throughout the season so far. I think Coleman, unfortunately, has picked up an injury tonight in the game away at West Brom. So that, that's a bonus for Liverpool that he's not going to be playing because he's been absolutely superb bombing forward yeah. down that right-hand side for Everton. And, and we've not had that kind of same threat coming from our full-backs, unfortunately. No, and the other big worry for me is, is, the, is the keeper. Mignolet, he's made... More errors that have led to a goal than any other player in the Premier League this season. Direct errors, four direct mistakes he's been attributed, <coughs> have been attributed to him. No other player has made four mistakes which have led to goals. Uh, he got away with one at Stoke. Poor keeping against City, Chelsea and now Villa. And they've all cost 
pretty crucial points. And he was a, he was a, he was doing stunningly well, wasn't he, at the start of his Liverpool career? But Christmas and on, he's dipped quite worryingly. Yeah. Well, the second goal, it's a classic example of communication. You know, it's it's just basics, isn't it? You know, the fact the cross has come in and Mignolet stretching, but Glenn Johnson's behind him, and if Glenn Johnson feels as though he should deal with the board, then then. And there should be some kind of communication between the pair of them, and in the end, it's an easy nodding for for Ben Teke. And, and it's a little bit concerning the, the keeper making a few mistakes. You could point at the fact that there is a little bit of uncertainty in front of him, constant change. So he's not developing that understanding with his two centre halves, his full backs, and that that could be affected. And we said the same when Joe Hart in Man City, they miss company, and at the moment we don't have that central figure in defence. Skirtle's played the majority of the games, but I don't see him as that commanding figure back there defensively. He's really orchestrating the defence like like Carra was. You know, mm. he, he was always going to be a big miss. Torres come in, you can never compare somebody else to somebody that's gone out like Carragher, but we are missing a Carragher leader back there in the defence. Who would you pick as your two? Would you play four at the back firstly? And yeah. would, who, would you, who would your two be in the middle? I think my, my central partnership would probably be Aga on the left-hand side and Torre, but obviously Aga's not fit at the moment, so but that would be my preferred um, central defence partnership. Yeah. In fact, Aga and Saka were sat just in front of me on, on Saturday. There you go. That <laughs> means no relevance at all to anything. I just thought I'd let you know. Great to know that, yeah. Flanagan was next to them as well, actually. Uh, they didn't do much talking to each other. I wonder if they're friends. I don't know. Maybe that's a problem. Who knows? Well, maybe anyway. just concentrating on the game, watching what was going on. Maybe, 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 maybe. In fact, Saka missed the start of the second half because he came out late to, to take his seat back, as did John Henry, interestingly. Well, we should mention John Henry, the fact that he was there. For the first time since Brendan Rodgers was appointed. Yeah, which is a little bit of a surprise in itself. He's come to watch an ent entertaining game of football. No doubt he's kept an eye on things. and It was entertaining, but not the way we probably would have wanted it to have gone. Maybe highlight, though, to him the fact that we do need reinforcements in this January transfer window. Maybe that's the reason why he's over here, because there could be a couple of dealings going on that we don't know. And uh, he said maybe to finalise one or two. Yeah, well, that's, that's interesting, actually. I was going to pick up on that. Um, Liverpool have made fewer substitutions than any other Premier League team this season. On Saturday, after 70 minutes, 75 minutes, you've got your number nine sat on the bench. The Liverpool Football Club number nine sat on the bench with 75 minutes gone, desperately in need of a goal, and the manager hasn't got the confidence to bring him on. I, th I think when you say Liverpool's number nine and then you say Aspas, then you can perhaps <laughs> see why... He's not got the belief to bring him on, you know. But surely, I mean, what's, what's he doing there? What's, what is literally, what is the point of Aspas if you can't bring him on when you need a goal desperately? I think he's been disappointed in his first season, Aspas, the fact that he isn't that goal threat that we thought he could be. He was a gamble at the price we paid for him. And um, I think mm. Brendan Rodgers may, again in this window, look at alternatives because if he's not got the belief to bring him on when perhaps you need to freshen it up a little bit, an injection of someone that could be more of a goal threat than... Um, it shows that he may be looking elsewhere. Yeah. Victor Moses as well. He was he was sat on the bench and surely he was brought in to do a job. And if it's not working, you know, Sterling was playing well. Henderson wasn't really getting into it. You know, you've got to you've got to freshen it up if you can. Brendan Rodgers. Rodgers Brendan Rodgers has always said there's never been a plan B. It's plan A or all, all the way through. And when you've got Suarez and Sturridge still on the pitch, those players can create a moment of brilliance at any time. And uh, he had belief in those two players more so than an Aspas on the bench. Oh, I wasn't. I wouldn't advocate taking off Suarez or Sturridge, but you've got, you know, you can change it. You can do. You can do something if you trust your players. And he obviously, if you bring Aspas on, he could take perhaps someone like Sturridge or Suarez's space. And you're thinking, you don't want to confuse it too much so that players create their own space. So you could see why he didn't bring him on. Mm, maybe, or maybe he didn't bring him on because if he had brought him on and he'd scored. The watching John Henry would have thought, oh, we don't need to spend any money because we've got this little diamond that no one even knew about. Just as well he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, any rumours in your dealings of players coming I, in? I think well, there's that many uh, reported to be linked with Liverpool. It always is every transfer window. I think the one that's been quite a strong rumour is the lad at Basel, is it? But, yeah, the, uh, um, the Egyptian winger, whose name escapes me. It begins with S, doesn't it? Salah's. Someone, someone shout his name quick. Salem, well, whatever his name is, we know who we're talking about. Exactly, you know. He caused Chelsea about. an awful lot of troubles, and and he's the one who's, who's quite an exciting prospect to to come and play at, at Liverpool. To be honest, he's a wide man, not too exciting if you're Raheem Sterling because he may take his place, but he's um, he's an exciting Salah. talent. That's Salah. his name, isn't it? 
you and I won't be inventing the song for him on the cuff anyway. No, probably not. We should know, but... There's only one what's-his-face. And that would be a terrible, terrible song. Wouldn't it? But th I'm sure we will see players come in. And like you say, the squad is a little bit too thin because we need to, we need to get back those European nights uh, and we have to finish in the Champions League places and Everton are having a good season. Tottenham are coming strong all of a sudden as well. United, I, I still don't think United will get anywhere near us, but well, not it, now. it seems to Surely be between no. us, Tottenham and Everton for that fourth place because Arsenal, I don't think they'll challenge for the league, but Chelsea and City will kick on, I think. Yeah, yeah it's definitely groups now, isn't it? There's the top three, then there's three below them, yeah. and then there's the rest. But, it, but the importance of the Champions League, you know, we're talking about Luis Suarez, what, how, how important he is for Liverpool. If we don't get in the top four by the end of the season, then I'm sure that new contract would have said that he will leave the club. Mm. And now he signed that contract. We need to attract players that he that can play as well with him. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Everton. Uh, we've just finished watching the uh, the Everton game here in the Rubies Cafe in West Kirby. Um, one all away at West Brom. I guess it's you know you'd take that, wouldn't you? Although when you're winning with. What, 20 minutes to go, you, you want to hold on? I think Everton will be disappointed, yeah. I felt as though they would have gone there believing they should have got the result and probably took the foot off the pedal in the second half a little bit. Probably should have gone more for the kill for the second goal. In the end, allowed West Brom to gain a bit of momentum and in the end, they scored a goal. And, and it was a good goal, to be fair. He got in front of Distan and it was the uh, Uruguayan centre-half who made a mistake for the first goal. But I, I thought Morales looked really sharp um, tonight. I thought he was a real effective player for Everton and... You know, they're going to be missing Barkley for the derby, but Morales looked in really good form. I yeah. must say as well, Lukaku looked almost as if he didn't want to put a good performance in against West Brom. You know, <laughs> with the, when the goal went in, he didn't want to celebrate, which is fair enough, it's his former team, but all night he just looked like he was a yard off the pace and I, I just didn't know whether it was the fact it was against his old club, West Brom, or not. But, you know, we've seen Lukaku absolutely superb and he, was, he wasn't effective at all for Everton. Yeah, he's, uh, he's gone off the boil a little bit in recent weeks. I mean, we don't want to. We don't want him to come back on fire for the derby from a Liverpool point of view. But he's the player that Everton do need to pick it up again. Well, I expect him to be fired up for that derby game when it comes around next week. But tonight, he did. He did look a little bit off the pace. I don't know whether maybe Martinez may rest him at the weekend for the cup tie away at Stevenage. Um, he's got a couple of other options. He could play up front and then make sure he is fresh for the, the game mm. at Anfield next week. I think we may see a couple of changes for both sides for the cup ties. It's important to do well in it, but this is where you get to see the squad. We saw in the last round for Liverpool against Oldham, didn't really have that much to get through. We needed Suarez to come off the bench and Coutinho to change it. So um, we'll have to wait and see this weekend. Both winnable games, though. Yeah, but you'd, I presume you'd you'd rest Suarez and Sturridge and Sterling, players like that. But they will game. be on the bench. They won't be left in Liverpool. They'll be travelling down to Bournemouth just in case needed because... The last thing Liverpool need is to be beaten away at Bournemouth in an FA Cup tie before the before the derby, and, and Everton will be the same away at Stevenage. Mm. Um, I thought uh, for Everton tonight, Oviedo looks looked quite good. He's obviously he's played left back while Baines has been out, and he's switched to a different position now on the sort of right side of the field. Like, yeah. and, he, and he played quite well. A couple of early chances. Yeah, he could have got on the score sheet himself. Um, um, he's a versatile player. He's played left back, played further forward there. I think if Everton's first team 11, he wouldn't be in it, but um, he's certainly a decent enough squad player that can do a job for them. Yeah. Um, and what about Leighton Baines' dive? Did you see that in the, uh, saw it. In the first Saw it. With Stephen Reid, he wasn't too happy, Steve, was he? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was a blatant dive, wasn't it? From an Englishman. An Englishman diving. Yeah. Ah, I like Leighton Baines. He, he's, he's a good lad. It was outside the penalty. It wasn't a penalty. It could, it could have perhaps come to something from the free kick, but I think there was maybe a little bit of intent from Reid, but you don't want to see players going down too easy. But he is an honest player, uh, Leighton Baines. There you go. Very good. But it wasn't a free kick. It was a, a dive. Kick, and it was a dive. Suarez's wasn't a dive. <clears throat> um, right then, we're almost out of time here. Uh, what did Tramia do at the weekend? They got beat 3 0. Improvement from their cup tie away at Peterborough. <laughs> yes. So they're getting better there. Yeah. Could do without playing Peterborough every week. But um, the good news for Tramir fans is they're signing Jake Cassidy. And oh, right. when Tramir had Jake Cassidy in the side, they were at the top of the table. So hopefully results will improve. Massive game at the weekend. Relegation fight against Crew. Not many teams below Tramir, but Crew are below Tramir. So it's an important yeah. game. Two home games coming up, Saturday then Tuesday. So they need to be looking at minimum of three, maybe four points in those two games. But real fight on the hands. But 
big news that signing Cassidy. He's a goal scorer. Lowe's got a lot of goals for him. No one else has chipped in. Cassidy may chip in, and it's. Uh, I'd be optimistic if I was a Tramway fan with him returning. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad you've done your research on Tramway because you've uh, you've certainly. Well, we want to see, we want to see them do. Well. We want to see them get out of that dogfight. And there's big teams down there: Sheffield United, Bristol City, who you think could put runs together and get away from it. So, hopefully, mm. Tramway with Cassidy arriving, uh, they they can get themselves out of it. Yeah. And there should be a big crowd as well for the weekend, crew. It's always, a, it's always a good, almost as local a derby as Tramia get, isn't it? So it's a big game, that one. I don't think crew will bring many, but yeah, I oh, suppose. I think they will, yeah, a couple of hundred. <laughs> 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 OK, right, that's it, folks. Uh, we will be back uh, Monday week to give you a little derby preview, which will be very exciting indeed. Already that game is looking like a massive Champions League qualification knockout type thing thank you very much for watching thank you to neil miller fresh from his appearance on the soccer m couch i think you, these couches are actually nice aren't they these leather these leather seats i think i'm looking smarter today than i did at some soccer are, yeah. this color the biggest collar you'll probably ever see <laughs> <laughs> and slightly less upset with your with your with the chap sitting next to you no woolly hat no chewing gum no that's fair enough much better isn't it i think so yeah good stuff okay folks see you next time Bye bye <laughs>